I can't believe it. It's happening. John Mayer, you're doing it. Doing it. Could this be the best tour he's done? Uh, the Europe leg of the solo tour? I, I mean, it's got some special things happening. It's got some special things happening. This is episode eight of Everything Mayer. Uh, my name is Tom Butwin. Thank you for joining us. If you're returning, amazing. If you are new, also amazing. Either way, please make sure you subscribe because it really helps us out here at the channel. I say us, it's just me, but thank you. Please subscribe. So let's get to it. Uh, you know, we've had four shows since we talked last, and we're going to go through those. Like I said, we've had some incredible surprises, uh, and it makes me feel like this is just one of the most exciting. It's hard to say best you know, but it's definitely one of the most exciting tours um, that I think we've gotten in a while. And it's what the solo format brings to us. You know, when he brings the band out, there are a couple of surprises here and there. But generally speaking, um, while the set does change every night, you know, it's harder when you got six, seven, eight people on stage to steer the ship in a different direction on, uh, the, you know, the drop of a hat. But we can do that with the solo tour, and that is what he's been doing. So let's go. Night one, O2, London, slow dancing in a burning room, shot in dark. Great opening one-two punches we've talked about before. I don't trust myself with loving you. Now, I got to be honest with you. Uh, at first, the, I heard a clip of this, and I was like, nah, I don't really know if that translates to the acoustic that well. I stand corrected because I went back and I, I found some additional material, um, you know, because I'm living vicariously through all of you who are at these shows, as many of us are. Uh, as I've said in previous episodes in the U.S., in, the Nor in North America, we get spoiled with John Mayer tours. Um, so I'm, I, it makes me happy that another part of the world is getting to experience him. I hope he makes it to South America. I hope he makes it to everywhere that uh, you would hope he would if you're watching or listening from one of those places, um, because I don't take for granted the fact that we get to see a generational talent on tour uh, primarily here in North America. So, um, but I don't trust myself with loving you. Uh, I changed my mind. I like it. It's really cool. But the first clip I saw of it, maybe it was just a weird 10 seconds of the song. I just didn't dig it. I do like it now. I think it's a really cool thing um, and it makes a lot of sense. It works. So something like Olivia, just a snippet of that face to call home. Last train home. I know at least one person in the comments, multiple probably, actually talked about wanting to hear Last Train Home again. Um, works on the acoustic. We got that acoustic version back when this came out, um, you know, which I think was overshadowed a little bit uh, by the in studio ballad version of Last Train Home, which is one of the coolest things Mayer's put out um, ever, honestly. So if you haven't seen that, go go watch it because you can see there's video. Um, Cool. Into, yeah, of course, In Your Atmosphere, become a staple. Never thought that song would be uh, just such a staple at shows, but it is. For a while, it was a unicorn song. Uh, You're Gonna Live Forever in Me, Changing. That part, uh, epic, as always, with the, the looped piano and guitar solo. Nothing different there. Stop This Train, Age of Worry. Um, Yebba Smith version of Age of Worry. Go listen to that. It's unbelievable. Um, just, just chills every time I hear it. Uh, Wonderland, In the Blood, Walt Grace. And then we're getting into um, Daughters. I believe, uh, I don't know if, I don't know that that was a sign request or a yelling request. I don't know. I, th I think it, maybe it was. Correct me if I'm wrong. But more importantly, Belief, tour debut. And that was definitely uh, off the cuff uh, version of Belief because um, there were some, there were some, Interesting interpretations on the guitar. We want to call them mistakes because, I mean, who, who who am I to say John Mayer is making a mistake? Um, but definitely, uh, <laughs> you can definitely see he's kind of making his way through the song. Uh, part of that is he's playing it on the double neck acoustic, and you got to look beyond the 12 string neck, which is the top neck, down to the six string neck, which he was using. And I mean, that's tough to do. It's, it's, you know, and that's actually uh, arguably, I know a lot of people think about neon or edge of desire is one of, uh, you know, Mayer's hardest songs to play and sing, but belief to do it right, right up there, if not more difficult in a lot of ways than those other two songs. Um, super cool that we got that uh my good friend silver sky guy or gummy visuals on youtube uh he's been at these shows and i know he's got video of that uh it'll be up on youtube eventually we'll definitely talk about some of those videos and use them with his permission of course uh in future episodes but a uh, nice surprise there edge of desire born and raised free fallen again yes free fallen again we've talked about that before let's go over to uh march 19th the second night 
And the cool thing about two night stands uh, in the same city is that, you know, with an artist like John Mayer, you're almost guaranteed to get a very different show between the two nights. Almost always happens. Once again, High Noon Espresso. I need to get a coffee sponsor on this, don't you think? We'll work on that. We'll get the team working on that coffee sponsor because I'm always drinking High Noon Espresso. Once again, if you if you know that reference, it's a John Mayer reference. So drop it in the comments if you happen to recognize it. But night two, we're getting a different one-two punch opening. Heartbreak Warfare, arguably one of the best opening songs he has. Shouldn't matter, but it does. What an underrated song from Sob Rock. Absolutely love that song. Love on the weekend. Um, I have a weird relationship with this song. Not not because it's like something that's happened in my life, but because I I just I, this song and who says I don't have any skips. John Mayer is like one, my only no skip artist, to be honest. But if I was if I had to pick a skip song, it'd be Love on the Weekend or Who Says. Probably Who Says before Love on the Weekend, but that's just me. Followed by Emoji of a Wave, so he redeems himself because that song is one of my favorites. Um, no such thing. Who says? Waiting on day. Neon rosy. Very cool. Don't get that as often as. Um, Maybe we should in your atmosphere. Then we get to uh, what I was wondering, what what was he going to do with the piano section? Because that's really been pretty solidly anchored by changing. Um, but I will be found lost at sea. Uh, go look this up. I don't have the video for it. But first of all, what a beautiful song. Second of all, what a beautiful moment in the show uh, to do this, uh, you could tell, and, and he even mentioned in his Instagram post about this show, about how cool this moment was. And you could tell, I mean, like from thousands of miles away watching through a phone, I could tell like that was a moment, um, to behold at this show. What a great, uh, what a great song and, uh, setting for it. Now I was, I mean, I didn't know as I was watching, I was like, oh my God, is he going to, is he going to loop this and then solo over it? Cause that would be really interesting. Uh, that did not end up happening to my knowledge. Um, but super cool, uh, into the continuum interview portion, of course, stop this train never gets old. Uh, daughter's age of worry, slow dancing mid set. That's old school, slow dancing. You know, we've gotten, we've grown up. If you've grown up with continuum gravity, slow dancing, when they came out, those were not the set closers, those were not the epic, you know, uh, moments that they have turned into. So it's cool to see that back kind of mid set. Uh, it's interesting, not really mid set towards the end, but um, kind of interesting, you know, uh, edge of desire, gravity on the black one, of course. Now that's really cool from a guitar player perspective. Um, uh, you know, it's, this channel is not about gear. If you like gear and stuff, go to my main channel, Tom Butwin. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, always amazing, even if you're not a guitar player, to see the iconic instrument associated with that artist is is really, really cool to be in the same room as that. At least it is for me. I don't know. You know, if you're a non-guitar player out there, how impactful is that to you? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. Like, do you care about something like that? Him pulling out his... Um, you know, the 64 Strat when that comes out or black one or, you know, like, are you a fan of the Silver Sky? Like, I mean, I'm curious because, you know, us guitar players and musicians, we have like tons of opinions for days about that stuff. But I'm curious the 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 fan who's not looking at it through that perspective. I, I would love to know what you think about that um, and and whether or not that's a that's a big deal to you. So let's move over to the Netherlands. Uh, right. Night one, another two night stand back to slow dancing shot in the dark war of my life. Um, been listening to a lot of, uh, JP Sachs lately. And for some reason, this song just reminds me of a JP Sachs song, not really like the lyrics or melody, but the, just the structure of the production and, and just the vibe of the song queen of California. What a cool song that is, uh, underrated. Dare I say vultures. I skipped a whole bunch of stuff. I had to go right to vultures though, because that was a crowd request. One more, one more sip of the high noon espresso. That was a crowd request. And uh, my good friend, Silver Sky Guy on Instagram and Gummy Visuals on YouTube, I think he described it in his post as filthy because it is groovy. And that song, you know it grooves when you hear it with a trio or even with the full band. But uh, I have a feeling that might make another appearance in the final three shows because that worked really, really well. And that's so cool about this. It's like you watch him discover 
things uh, that work in this format and ways to move through them. Sometimes it works really well. Vultures is an example of that. I would argue when he did Belief, I don't. I, I love Belief. It might be my favorite John Mayer song. It didn't. I don't think it worked that well. It's okay. I mean, like go back and listen to Belief on the Village Sessions. There's, there's a see if you're a super fan. You know Village Sessions. Um, but the belief on that is cool. But that's two guitars. So, you know, he didn't have Robbie McIntosh with him. So, uh, cool. Vultures was amazing. Let's see. Back to You're Gonna Live Forever and Changing. Stop this train. Assassin. Now, that was super cool, too. Again, like this show, actually, this show kind of went off, like, uh, with Assassin, In Repair, um, and Vultures being requests. Uh, and they all worked really well, I thought. Just surprises. Just so cool to see those types of things happen. Uh, I mean, and, and also, so you get Heart of Life and Stop This Train in the same set piece there. Same show. Because I feel like, you know, not lyrically speaking, but kind of vibe-wise on Continuum, Stop This Train and Heart of Life kind of occupy a similar sonic space. So it's I, I find it interesting they both got played there. They're both great acoustic songs. Heart of Life works really well on the Resonator uh, Walt Grace guitar. So obviously that's why he did that there. Edge of Desire, Born and Raised, Free Fallen. No surprises there. Um, so let's move over to Night 2. Night 2 at the Ziggo Dome. Is that how you say it? Ziggo Dome? I don't know. Iconic, though. Okay. Uh, thank you for the ads. I'm not getting paid for those. Come on now. Um, March 22nd, XO, the Beyonce cover, opens up the show. I love the fact that Free Fallen and XO were like some of his top streaming songs for many, many years, maybe close to a decade. Uh, I don't trust myself. Made it back in because it works so well. Uh, let's see. Love on the weekend. Shouldn't matter. Neon. Who says waiting on the day? Speak for me. Cool tune. Sign request. Love that. Uh, let's see. Again, I will be found. Um, another really special moment. Uh, I, that song. I mean, like you can tell. You can just tell when a song uh you know he talks about these songs like they're his kids and uh i get that like i mean like you can you can just see the love he has for some of these songs and i feel like that's one of them um especially on this tour uh it's really 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 sits nicely in this set um stop this train in the blood now covered in covered in rain i do have a clip of that thanks to thanks to i hope i say your name right it's you know here in america in america it's Eric dash, you know, and if you really mispronounce it's Jan, I mean, it's not Jan, it's Eric Jan, Eric Jan. I hope that's what I'm, I hope I'm saying it correctly, but thank you to you for this clip. So let me pull up this clip of covered in rain. Uh, we're not going to watch the whole thing, but, um, sign requests, super cool. Haven't heard this in a long time. There's the loop. Good call moving over to the screen. Beautiful. Amazing. I mean, I, it's just I, I absolutely love this song, and we don't we don't hear it a lot. I mean, you know, back in the day, back in the any given Thursday days, um, you you would hear this quite a bit, um, and it was an epic kind of like jam thing. But here, you know what? All right. Yes, of course, I planned this. I have it plugged in. So let's. Let's not pretend like this is uh, it's totally off the cuff, but it, I mean, it's, it is mostly, mostly off the cuff. But so here's, here's the cool thing. Let me ditch the, uh, the set list for just a minute here. So uh, a couple things about Covered in Rain. One, it's the only one of two songs that I'm familiar with that are in drop D for John Mayer, which is just a different tuning. You detune your lowest string to a D instead of an E. Second cool thing is it's two chords. It goes from here. Technically three, but we'll call it two. The third thing about this song is that it's actually the bridge of City Love, the other drop D song. So if I can, let me find the key here, you know, because it's it, it changes keys in City Love. 
And I can't remember life before the day She called up and came to me Covered in rain and you see where it goes from there. So he even says covered in rain in the bridge of City Love. So if you've been around since any given Thursday days, you know that already. But I wanted to point that out. It's kind of a cool thing that happens in uh, covered in rain. So let's go back to the set list. Oh, man, that's Wild Blue, which I was at the show in Detroit that um somebody shouted out wild blue and he tried it on the acoustic uh and i think that's a really cool version of that song i'm assuming he did it the same way here good love is on the way another um snippet probably yelled out i think that's what was going on slow dancing your body's a wonderland into edge of desire do you know me and the guitar lele with in your eyes and gravity on the black one again so that rounds out what we have so far we've got seven of ten shows that have been completed coming up paris france tomorrow as of recording uh this show so how do we feel about the tour so far like i said at the beginning of this it is really 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 something to me uh you can tell he's enjoying it and when someone's enjoying something as much as mayor is on this solo tour and um you know it's been around for a while we've been doing the solo thing for a minute now so uh i think that the audiences have rejuvenated this this version of the show um and that is clear to me based on the performances that he's giving and the song choices and all of that a word about the audiences for a second um you know they are incredible at these shows seated most of the time quiet i mean he does a really amazing job of shrinking an arena we've talked about that before even here in the u.s uh, making it feel intimate but even uh, even more so in europe because you can just see that it's just a different approach from concert goers there they're seated they're paying attention they're hanging on every word that he's saying in between songs and it's it's dead silent in the arena when he's talking it's amazing it's amazing and it's not to take anything away from you know fans here but i mean like there's a lot of times where people are talking through songs and quiet moments and and i'm like you know i i i'm a musician also so i i it helps me feel better about the fact uh you know that a lot of times people don't pay attention when you play because if you go to these big venues and they're talking over people like bruce springsteen dave matthews john mayer i mean you got no chance if you're somebody like me. So um, kudos to the audiences because I think you, you've you created a really cool environment for yourselves, setting a good example. Um, and I'm sure Mayer, uh, no, obviously he notices it. Uh, you can just tell by his demeanor on stage. You can just tell in between song banters is different uh, when you have a room like that. So uh, that's it for today's episode. But let's do some housekeeping again. Um, again, for the super fans, if you've made it this far, that's what I always say. I always save the, the best stuff for the end here. Um, I don't have any crazy surprises for you, but again, as I've said before, if you missed it in the last one, we've got some exciting things that I hope are going to come to this channel, to this show. Um, as always, if you have suggestions of things you'd like me to cover, stuff you'd like me to react to, questions you might have, people you might want me to try to talk to, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me in the comment section here on Instagram, uh, through my website, you know, wherever I'm, I, you can get a hold of me a lot of different ways. So please do that. Please like the videos. That's super helpful. Um, it's super helpful if you subscribe, all those things. Uh, I, I really appreciate the amount of support that we've had so far in a pretty short amount of time, we skyrocketed past a thousand subscribers uh, very quickly, which is really cool. Um, and it's fun because on this channel, I feel like we got kind of a community. I hope to get that on my main channel at some point, some inside baseball here for you. Um, but it's tougher uh, over there because it's, it's you know, it's more gear based and topic based and, you know, it's people pop in and pop out. Whereas here, we're all here for like one united common purpose and that is the love for, uh, you know, this music uh, and this artist. So uh, it's super fun to hang out with you all in the comments. Uh, a lot of you have gone over to Instagram. Uh, the, the channel does have an Instagram account. Um, you know, honestly, I'm not doing much with it at this point because most of my efforts are going to be focused here on this channel. Um, it's just kind of the way it is. Eventually we'll get over to clips on, on Instagram, but, um, for the time being, this is where we will exist. So, um, thank you so much. If you've made it this far, I'm almost done with my high noon espresso. 
Uh, and I'm excited for the final three here. What do we think? Are, are there going to be any crazy surprises that we haven't seen yet? Because honestly, this middle section has had way more surprises than I ever would have guessed uh, for the European solo tour. We'll see you in the next one.